All right, so we're back, and the object here tonight, and probably all weekend, this will probably be, uh, I'm trying to get more progress in one video, which we're always trying to do that. But anyway, last time we were here, we test fired this thing up. It didn't, it burned. The charge of sawdust I put in there is nothing but ashes right now. It's, it's all gone. But um, it did not perform very well. So what we're going to be doing, a couple things I need to do. I need a bigger exhaust. So we have a piece of 4-inch uh, exhaust pipe right there. We're going to kind of square this end a little bit, and that will become apparent why we need to a little bit farther along. I'm going to cut this piece off right here. This is stainless. That's why it wasn't welding very well for me. Over here I have another piece of 8-inch uh, Schedule 40 carbon steel pipe. So we're going to make our inducer assembly out of that. We have a piece of quarter-inch plate steel. We're going to be drilling a 3-inch hole in the middle of this. And we're going to be doing a kind of a restriction plate. And what's going to happen with that, let me grab our inducer motor here. And yes, I still have my test plug on it. That's my test whip for everything I do, so I can see if it's going to work before I finalize wires. So anyway, i you a little closer here. This inducer assembly is going to sit up kind of close to that right there. And the whole idea is with a smaller hole, we're not going to be moving. It'll still move air. It'll move air a lot better than what we had because it's still going to be a much bigger exhaust outlet. But the problem is with the end of that squirrel cage just wide open like that, it actually overamps your motor. Um, a lot of people think with uh, blower motors, a lot of folks are under the impression that... Uh, the more airflow you have to it, the lower the amp draw is going to be, which is not the case. Air has mass, you know what I mean? There, there's mass to air. There's weight to it. When you have the squirrel cage wide open like that, it's going to try to move more than what it's supposed to. And what ends up happening is you overamp your, your motors. If you remember, we ran into that with the, uh, the blower motor for the exhaust for the forge hood. And we ended up having to put a little restrictor plate on there to get the amp draw down. I mean, that was, it's rated for like 5.7 amps. We we're drawing 20 amps for it and tripping the internal overload on the motor itself. So we don't want to do that. Um, so anyway, I guess first things first, we'll get this cut off of here. We'll get our piece of eight inch pipe off of that that we need. We only need like a six or eight inch piece off of that. So we'll zip that off. We will work on getting our plate on there. We've got to cut that. I'm not going to worry about cutting this terribly clean. I'm just going to stick that piece of 8-inch pipe over it, cut it to cut it to the radius of this, which I'm still still getting better at that. Cut it to the radius of this tank right here, this this uh, shell, and then we're going to weld it on. So, it's going to be I said it was some minor tweaking in the last video. It's actually going to be some major tweaking to get just a little bit more out of it. So we will see what happens. So stay tuned. and catch you on the other side of it. All right, where is my hearing protection? <clears throat> starting, to wear, uh, starting to wear hearing protection a lot more. I'm spending a lot of time saying, what? Huh? What? Well, I think it's time to start using the stuff before I end up deaf. Ha <laughs> ha, we won.
All right, so the last time that we met, I told you guys that we were going to be putting on a, making a new inducer assembly, something maybe a little more fitting for what we're doing. So, here's what we have. Get it to where you can see it. So the inducer motor is going to attach to this ring right here. This is two and a half inches deep into the steel, quarter inch plate steel. We have a, another piece of pipe, about an inch long, welded in there. And that's going to bring the exhaust inside the actual squirrel cage itself. Now on the back side of this, that's what we're looking at right there. So that piece is welded in solid. You guys can see that. Welded in both sides, get that as airtight as we possibly can. So what's going to happen here, the exhaust is going to pull through here. So you can get pulled in by the inducer motor into this ring right here. I'm trying to get it so you guys can get the light there. And then uh, we're going to have our 4 inch pipe coming off the side here. Now the 4 inch pipe we're going to have to shape the end of it kind of rectangular so it all fits. We can get all the surface area we need inside the, uh, the actual squirrel cage itself. I don't want any on the other side of that pipe. So that's where we're at. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep on working. I'm not going to run the camera while I'm welding because um, we've done that enough already. So I think it'll be a little bit, uh, I'll just kind of show it more as we're getting it together and whatnot. So keep watching. Alright, so there she is folks. We'll see if the camera doesn't mess up again. But you can't really, well, I guess you can see it a little bit, but the, the inducer wheel's in there. And that inner piece of pipe I showed you guys earlier, that goes inside the actual squirrel cage. It leaves uh, oh, about an inch and three quarter from that lip to the back of the squirrel cage. But that'll, that'll ensure that it's sucking from out here into the squirrel cage and that it's putting out where it needs to. So we're going to get this... Oh, we're going to get this welded on and I'll run the camera back on when we are done welding it on. Now, just for a draft test, I know this is kind of a half-ass draft test. Holy cow, that's heating up three times as fast. Here's my box here. Let's see what we get. Say that's working. Need some flame in there. Oh, much, much better, folks. Heating up quick. Alright, I guess we could finally do some proper temperature monitoring on this now. Alright, folks, we're running. We've been running it about an hour and a half, two hours. Now, I only put about that much sawdust in the bottom of it. The shorter the fire is, in one of these, the cooler it runs. The hottest we got the top on this was 350 degrees. And at 350 degrees, we had a 118 degree stack temperature going out the wall. That's pretty good. That means we're removing a whole lot of heat off of this as it's burning. Uh, the four inch flue, the better inducer setup, uh, you know, the inducer housing, the plate in there with the collar made all the difference in the world. So all we have left to do on this is I have a boiler, uh, boiler sight glass for a burner, an old one. I'm going to put it on the top here so I can look in on the fire and see what it's doing. And on the bottom here where our air intake is, I just have to make a restrictor plate 
where we can throttle the air up and down on it. I'm just going to take, I've got a piece about uh, a foot wide of this barrel that we cut off when we originally, when we first started doing it. And so we'll take that and we'll make a plate for that one that we can slide open and close. So I'm pretty damn happy with that. That's actually, uh, there's no smoke in here. It's working perfect. Took me all weekend to make this video. It was five degrees in here last night. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was so cold the camera wouldn't work. Uh, that's why <laughs> there's some missing footage and things like that. I went inside to put them on the computer and it's like, oh, I'm missing half of them. That's just no good. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this project was a long time in the making. It's one of those things. I start a lot of projects. I finish them, but it takes me forever because there's always a million other things I get into. I'll start something, then five, six years later, I'll come back to it and finish it. This uh, this thing, we started building this, and it's a real simple build. We started building this thing in the off time when we weren't working on the barn. The first winter we were building the barn, the first winter we had the channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw together a an overview video of this build. And here's the deal. Internet being what it is, YouTube being what it is, people being so happy. If you build one of these, it's on you. It has nothing to do with me. This is not UL listed, it's not UL approved. If you put it in your structure, chances are your insurance is not going to cover it. And that is something I'm gonna to have to really be conscious of as I'm running it. The wood stove upstairs is covered on my insurance and things like that my forge, stuff like that. Unfortunately, that's not going to be covered under my insurance. So, it's something where I'm going to have to be extremely careful. I'm taking a big chance doing that. But I'm, I've am i always been of the mindset, I would hate to lose everything I have in here and all the work I did to it. But if God forbid it ever happened, I'd just start over and we'd do it again. That's, uh, one of those never say die moments, I guess, but this is on you if you build one. If you build one of these things and it burns your place down, that's got nothing to do with me. I just, I get on camera here and I show you guys the different stuff I'm building and the projects I'm doing. Like I always say, find your own answers, do your own research. Um, something like this though, it would be interesting to see what it would take to actually get it UL approved how much that would cost to do something like that. And it might be worthwhile doing it in the future just to protect myself liability wise on this building. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Oh, another note on the liabilities. This building, by the way, is listed as an ag building. So it does fall under a little bit of a different bracket. Now, it's not gonna be valued quite as high as it would be if it wasn't an ag building. But I guess I should say if something did happen to it, the shell of the building I will be able to get covered. It's just everything in it I won't be able to. So anyway, there, that was my little digression, my little liability, all that crap. So two and a half hours, we're down to, uh, or hour and a half, or whatever the hell it is. We're down to 250 degrees now. The charge of sawdust I have in there, it's still smoldering, but it's about gone. Um, if I built the fire about twice as high, this thing would burn a lot hotter, but I didn't want it too hot for the first initial run. And the first few runs, we're gonna take it slow and easy. We'll burn, I'll make them a few inches higher every time until we get a happy level where we like it. So anyway, have a good night everybody, and I'll see you on the next one.